Today, we're going to talk about why you need to set systems, not goals, to actually become fluent this year. In this episode of Business English with your hostess, Tanya Suarez, your communication coach, I'm going to share with you why goals are not the ideal to actually see progress. This happens to all of my clients and all of my followers who share with me every year that they want to become more fluent, that this is a year they're going to work on their advanced pronunciation. Great intention, but usually a few days, some of you are great and it takes a few weeks, but then your efforts fall apart. And that's because you just had the goal of becoming fluent. It's kind of like having the goal of uh, losing weight or getting more fit and going to the gym. Okay, so that's the big picture, but then you don't have a system. You might even tell yourself, no, 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 my system is that I'm going to go to the gym three times a week. Okay, but then you go to the gym and you realize you have a lot of machines to choose from. You have different workouts. You actually don't know what to do or you're tired from work and family and you just don't have the mental bandwidth to pick what to do with and where to start. That's why systems are going to help take all of that mental drain away and replace it with actual, actionable progress. This is a game changer for fluency. The reason systems work is because they provide consistency. And if you download my 2024 fluency system, I actually give you what to do each day. I like to have a little bit of option. So there are about five activities every day that you have a choice and they're all less than five minutes. Yes, less than five minutes a day is going to lead to fluency. And look, before you get defensive and think that's impossible or I'm determined, I'm gonna do 30 to 60 minutes a day. I love that for you. I think your intention is great. But I have seen this time and time again. Again, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. I can tell you right now that is not sustainable. Your system has to be sustainable. It has to be fun. It has to be quick. On the days that you have more time, great, do more. But in order for this kind of fluency system to work, it requires you to reset your mindset. To go back to the gym analogy, if you go to the gym for one or two hours, but you only do that once a month, you're not going to see the progress that you need. Much in the same way, fluency has to do with muscle. It has to do with muscle memory, with training. In addition to practicing the expressions, it's also about taking the passive learning you've been doing, like listening to podcasts like this one, watching shows, studying. That's great, but that's not fluency, that's knowledge. So what I want you to do this year is follow the system, do one to five minutes a day, and you'll see exactly what you can pick from. And you're going to need to work out the muscle. By being able to improve your pronunciation with the muscular practice, you're going to be able to then add to that fluency and intonation. And then you'll be able to add expressions and other things that will help you improve your communication. Let's talk about some of the benefits of using a system for fluency training. Number one is consistency over intensity. So looking at the article that I wrote about this, unlike goals that are often time bound and rigid, systems prioritize regular practice. For instance, habit stacking. By integrating this English practice with a habit that you already do every day. For example, if you're really good about going to the gym and you don't have to think about that, then add five minutes of English fluency training before or after. If you meditate every day, do the English training after. These are ways that you can help yourself be consistent by stacking this new habit, this new system, on top of something that you're already successful doing. And this will lead to much more consistent practice. And I'll be honest, my big goal with systems is to help you think less. If you're constantly planning what to study, if you're constantly thinking about when to do it, you're taking away valuable time that you could use actually opening your mouth and practicing. The second benefit is adaptability. Systems are flexible. They can be adjusted according to changing schedules and workloads, which is crucial for professionals who juggle multiple responsibilities. Does this sound like you? Yes, you need this adaptability. So what I like about the flexibility and adaptability of systems is you can do habit stacking. Maybe on the days that you don't have time to do the first habit, you can move it. If you're really tired at night, you can do it in the morning. You're going to learn when your optimal learning time is and your optimal practice time. So remember to be flexible and forgiving. A third benefit is measurable progress, which all professionals love this. 
With systems, progress is continuous and measurable. Instead of aiming to be fluent in a year, a system-oriented learner might focus on using specific vocabulary in meetings or understanding financial reports in a foreign language, thus making the learning process more tangible and integrated into their professional context. All of this is a more eloquent way of saying that you can adapt the practice to fit your needs. So if you are a CFO who needs to give presentations talking about quarterly data and figures, then you can choose to do the five minute practice by reading articles of people talking about that topic. That way you're not only practicing the muscular movement, you're also integrating fluency in your particular niche. I will say, that's a wonderful thing to do, but don't do that 100% of your, the time. I really want you to also incorporate interests. So sure, you work in finance, do the finance articles for your reading practice, but also if you like travel, if you enjoy other hobbies, pick resources that you can do your read out loud practice about those topics because small talk in American business is really important. So I also want you to be able to have casual conversations and talk about things that you're interested in so you can form genuine connections and grow your network. A fourth benefit is stress reduction. Setting lofty language goals can be daunting, leading to stress and burnout. Systems, however, encourage a more relaxed and sustainable approach to language learning. This, for me, was a game changer. I applied this because I don't like to recommend anything that I don't try. And when I had my own mid-year review, I decided I wanted to incorporate guided meditations. And so what I did, instead of doing what I do every year of like, I'm going to learn how to meditate. I'm almost 40. It never worked. <laughs> but this year, I tried to do a system. So what I did was I added a 10-minute guided meditation every morning after I wake up. This was a game changer. I have been consistent with this, I would venture to say about 95% of the time in the past six months. Because it was a system, I didn't have to think. Because I was specific in a guided 10-minute meditation, I quickly could look it up on YouTube or use an app that I have and find the resource that I need without taking what used to take me hours of finding the right thing to do. So the system allowed me to take the effort that I was putting in the wrong place and put it in the actionable place. And benefit number five is building a learning culture. For leaders, adopting a systems-based approach to language learning can also inspire their teams. It sets a precedent for continuous learning and development within the organization. This approach makes you a better leader because you start seeing what works for you you start seeing things in a more tangible way instead of, because I find once you get into leadership positions, you do switch to a more bigger picture thinking and you forget what it's like for the people that have to take that big picture and implement it. So I think this gives clarity. It gives inspiration. And when you see that progress in you, honestly, it boosts confidence and happiness. And a confident, happy leader is always a good thing. A great way to get more English speaking practice is to start your own podcast. Spotify for Podcasters makes it so easy to record, edit, and distribute your podcast right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like or how much experience you have or don't have, you can start creating today. Not only is it simple, it's totally free. I decided to start my podcast with Spotify and it's helped me reach hundreds of thousands of people. So download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Now, how can you implement this system for bespoke learning? As I mentioned before, I have a PDF guide that you can use. It's got the checklist. I have the daily checklist, specific activities you can do, resources. And then I also have a weekly checklist that helps you keep track every week for the entire year. Even if you miss a week or a few weeks, it doesn't matter. The goal of this system is to help you have the tools, have the accountability. Don't shy away from it. Don't take that page, crumble it, and then quit doing it. Just acknowledge and figure out why did you skip those days? Why were you not present that week? And just help yourself reset. Again, be forgiving. I know most people that follow me tend to be perfectionists. <laughs> and this system allows you to let go of perfectionism and focus on results. Just like if you stop going to the gym, you could stop going the rest of the year, but what good does that do? Just pick back up and start day one whenever you need to. 
Speaking of my fluency system, I'm not here to gatekeep. I would love for you to download the PDF to keep yourself accountable, but let's go over right now what the daily activity options are. The first one that I have for you is to read one sentence three times. I tell absolutely all of my clients this. This is a tiny practice that gives you massive results. So what you do when you're reading it three times, the first time is always going to be awkward. It's when you kind of work out the insecurity, when you work out the awkwardness of reading something that you haven't read before. The second time, focus on your breathing as you're reading, focus on the intonation and the pausing. And the third time you want to focus on, now that you know the meaning of the sentence, where you deliver, where you emphasize. And again, reading one sentence three times, that is not a big time commitment but the impact that has on your fluency is massive. The second activity option I have for your fluency practice is to read for one minute out loud. So this is different than the first activity because the first one gives you a chance to redo and improve. By reading one minute out loud, this is made even better if you record yourself. Yes, it is awkward to hear your own voice. Yes, it is awkward to see yourself if you're doing a video recording. Remember, don't be critical, be constructive. By reading out loud for a minute and knowing that you have to record yourself, it will cause a little bit of anxiety. So what that's going to do is you're going to help yourself relax, feel anxiety, work through it, calm yourself down, and be able to read something that you haven't read before. Because I actually recommend don't read it beforehand, but you can do that if you, if you have time. And just see how you can pronounce things, what your fluidity is without practice. Then when you look or listen to your recording, you're able to see what you want to work on body language wise. Do you look nervous? Maybe it's just practicing relaxing your shoulders throughout the day. So this gives you actionable things you can do throughout your day to improve your fluency and confidence. A third option is to sing a song. So with this, I recommend go on YouTube, Google the title of the song plus lyrics, and you should be able to find something. Don't pick a song that's super fast. But what I love about this practice is, look, you're probably really busy and there are going to be days where you feel exhausted. So by adding something that's truly fun, a song that you love, that's going to help you also associate English with fun. English is natural. By incorporating these more fun resources, it's also about helping you feel natural, feel calm, feel fun when you're doing things in English. When you're singing the song, this is a great way to practice connected speech because singing, not only is it rhythmic, but it also blends the words really nicely. So that's going to help you get used to connected speech without over-intellectualizing it and having a good time. For this one, I would recommend do one song per week. Like do with the song more than one time because it's always a little hard to get used to some of the faster parts. The more you do it, the more your mouth will feel comfortable and it's one less thing to choose. The fourth activity you can do is to read an episode description. You're probably already watching Netflix every night or listening to podcast episodes. So something simple you can do is read the episode summary, the description, before or after you watch the show. Usually they're about one to five sentences. It's a topic you're already interested in. For small talk purposes, it'll give you the vocabulary to talk about what you watch if someone asks you the next day. And it's habit stacking. If you're already binging shows every night, you may as well add this to it. And you don't have to think about what to do or when to do it. The fifth activity option is to answer a question. So in the PDF, I've added a link to some of my favorite resources for random questions. And what you're going to do with this is they're meant to be conversational and casual. Don't answer it like you're in a job interview. You're going to pick a random question. The list I have in there um, is numbered. So you could pick a random number like 27. You go look at which question that is. Pretend a friend or colleague is asking it to you and answer it conversationally. But it doesn't stop there. So be concise and then ask a question back like you're trying to keep the conversation going. This is fluency. Fluency does not mean that you're able to give a monologue. True fluency involves conversation. It involves connection with other people. So this particular practice I love because you have to train yourself to give a short answer. This is especially important for, for cultures like, for example, in Latin America, you tend to be way more descriptive. Whereas in American culture, we tend to be more bottom line and direct. So this gives you an opportunity to figure out how to answer these random questions in a short, clear way, and then also re-engage the other person by asking a question in return. 
And last but not least, another option is to complete a section in my Advanced Pronunciation Accelerator program. So if you've already gotten this program, you'll notice that every masterclass is split up into one to four minute sections. So what you can do for daily accountability, even if you were awesome and you watched the full masterclass on one day, every day, pick a little section from it and rewatch it and practice it. So you know, you'll notice that all the activities are about you repeating after me. So by doing this, by the time you're doing that program and you're following me, your English is upper intermediate to advanced. That means that any pronunciation mistakes you're making are pronunciation mistakes you've made for years, if not decades. That's a lot of muscle memory that you're going to need to correct. So even if you've done the masterclass, you need the repetition and the practice in order to actually change and hear the improvement. All right, so that is my argument for why systems over goals are your path to fluency this year. I'm so excited to share more interviews this year, and I have lots of episodes I'm preparing with business English expressions. I would love to hear from you what you would like me to add to the podcast. So let me know in the comments. And of course, I would really appreciate you subscribing, liking, following, and adding reviews for the podcast. The more of you that join this community, the more I'm able to create content that will help you feel fluent and confident. Remember, your English is good enough. You are good enough. What we're working on now is unlocking your voice, unlocking your confidence, and helping you be yourself in English. Whether that means being a confident leader, a good friend, a caring spouse, fluency means connection. And remember to check the episode description for the notes for this episode and the link to the Daily Fluency System printable PDF packet. Mm -hmm.